Hello everybody, this is Drew Douglas and we are back with WordPress for Designers Day uh, 18, Day 18 today. Um, in Day 17, to recap a little bit, we went through and integrated our slider into the back end of WordPress. Um, you know, we made it easy for the user to just log in and uh, add some pictures and uh, whatever text they wanted. Um, just save their changes and it would integrate uh, straight into the slider. So um, that's what we covered in day 17. Today we're going to uh, take care of a different page. We're going to look at our contact page and we're actually going to make a really simple um, but completely functional Ajax contact form. So, um, you know, we'll just work that straight into WordPress using um, jQuery uh, for our JavaScript library. So I think you guys will enjoy what we're going to do today. Um, by the end of this, you will know how to uh, integrate a simple Ajax contact form into any kind of WordPress site that you happen to be working on. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's take a look at where we left off. You'll see that I have a contact page set up, um, well, that we already had set up. I, I have added, um, you know, we're using our custom fields page text. I've added our little page text into there that will go on that wrinkled piece of paper that we've been using. Um, and yeah, anyway, pretty standard here. That's all I've really done with it. And I've saved the changes. So if we go here and we go to our contact page, uh, you can see that our page text is shown up here. And, um, you know, there's still our services and testimonials showing up in the sidebar because we're just using that default. Um, page template that we've that we've stuck with so um, and we don't have anything here so if we go into coda here actually let's take a look at the PSD really quickly okay so you can see that we need an our other links in the sidebar instead of um, testimonials and and whatnot uh, we need our form with all of our nice little form style and input uh, buttons and um, and that's about it and then we need it to actually work. So, so if we come over here, we go to the page.php file. Um, you'll notice that it's still pulling um, testimonials out, which we don't need. It's pulling out a page image, which we don't need. And um, it's pulling the page text, which we do need. So we can go ahead and get rid of um, a bunch of this stuff. We can go ahead and get rid of uh, that and we're going to do that uh, right now with a new WordPress default template. Lost my train of thought there for a second, sorry. Okay, so we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this file uh, contact underscore page dot php. Okay, and then we're going to go back to our original page.php and we're going to copy the, the entire contents and we are going to paste it in here. And go ahead and save. Okay, at the top of our new uh, file, we're going to go up and let WordPress know that this is a new template file we're creating. So we'll open up some PHP comments. Oops. We'll say template name, contact page. And uh, that's all we have to do to let WordPress know that we're going to have a new contact page now that's going to be available for us to use. Uh, go ahead and get rid of the testimonial and page image. We won't be using either of those. And since we're getting rid of those, we can scroll down here and we can get rid of the testimonials altogether. We won't need them. Um, services, we can just, you know, for now we can just change to other links. That's what it says, right? Yeah, and we can just leave the links there for now. Of course, we you know could go into WordPress and pull some links out of the back end. Uh, that's not our focus today, though. So do do what you want with those uh, for the time being. Okay, so we'll scroll down to page content. Well, uh, we really don't need uh, much of this. So right above the um, break class of dirty little trick, all the way up to the image tag, we're just going to get rid of. And then this is where we're just going to build our form. So um, if you've ever, you know, worked with forms, I'm sure most of you have as web designers or web developers, 
Um, we're going to kind of just stick to the general form markup here, so it's going to be quite a bit of markup, but um, you know, um, hopefully pretty semantic, and and it will allow us to have enough elements to work with here for the styling and whatnot. So go ahead and give it a form ID of contact form. Action is going to go to send underscore mail dot php and method is going to be post. This means that the form is going to uh, post to the send mail dot php file which we're going to create a little later on. Go ahead and close off our form. Uh, next we'll do a field set. And there we go. And a legend which would be contact us. We take a look at the PSD. Alrighty. Uh, next we'll have our first label. We'll say label for name, which is going to be the name field. And underneath that we'll have the input class. We're going to say required and short text. Uh, notice that I'm giving it two different classes there. That's a uh, required class and a class of short text. Uh, that'll just come in handy a little bit later down the road. A type of text. The name of this is going to be name. And the value will be empty. Okay. And we can just copy and paste what we just did, the label and the input, and that way we can save a little bit of typing. Now we'll say label for uh, the email address. So we'll work, you know, we're going to require an email for uh, from the user. We'll keep the same input class text, and we'll change the name to email. So there's that. Uh, next, we're going to do the subject. So with the subject for the email, label for subject. Subject, required, short text, that's fine, uh, and the name is going to be subject. Um, you know, you might want to choose to not require one, but we're going to require that they have some kind of a subject header before they send us an email. And finally, the message, this will be label for message, and this will be a text area, not an input. So we'll say text area class equal to required and long text. Name is equal to message. Value is blank. And we're just going to put rows and columns and leave them blank. We'll set them with CSS, but I believe they're required. And we'll close our text area. And lastly, we need our uh, submit button. input type equals submit name equals submit class is going to be submit form and value is going to be send email and we'll close that off okay the last thing that we're going to put inside um, of this form is going to be a div ID of loader and you're going to see what this does. This is going to be an empty div. I just put a spacer in there. Um, and it will be, uh, it'll kind of hold some of our Ajax um, effects that we're going to do a little bit later in this um, video screencast. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and check our page and see what that gives us. Okay, not very pretty, but we have our basic form um, and markup that we need. So I guess we'll go ahead and uh, we'll knock the CSS out for the form. Um, we already have all the images. If you go back to when we sliced, uh, not sure the day off the top of my head, but if you go back to the day we sliced all the images out, we have the images for this. So, yep, that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll go to style.css and we will scroll all the way down. Uh, you can place this wherever you want, but I'm just going to append it onto the bottom. We'll say contact styles. Uh, 
Okay, for our ID of contact form, which is our form wrapper, we're going to give it a margin of 40 pixels on the top and bottom and nothing on the left and right. A generic font size of 14 pixels and a width of 350 uh, pixels. For our legend, say contact form legend. Font size is going to be 28 pixels. Letter spacing is going to be one pixel. This is a, just a little CSS um, adjustment to get get it looking exactly like the PSD or as close to the PSD as we can get it to look. Font weight of bold, uh, margin, 40 pixels on the bottom. All right, moving on to the label. Uh, actually, we don't need to style that, I don't believe. Uh, input field is going to be a width of 310 pixels, height 34. Again, you can get this by just looking at the background images. The background is going to be transparent. Our URL is located at style, images, uh, contact underscore input dot jpeg no repeat and scroll border none make sure the display I'm overriding here um, okay margin we want 10 pixels of margin uh, on the bottom color is going to be uh, DDD font size is going to be 17 pixels and the font style is going to be italic so I feel like I might be going a little too fast for this so I'll slow down and kinda show you what we have so far if we refresh you can see it's already looking much nicer with the input fields um, if we actually type here, you can see it doesn't look too bad. Um, so yeah, let's continue on now that we know what we're looking at. Uh, we need to style our text area still and our button. Our text area will be a background, transparent, URL, it's going to be style, images, text area bg.jpg no repeat scroll moving on it's going to have a width of 378 pixels a height of 149 no border color of ddd font size of 17 pixels and the font family uh, for the text area doesn't look very pretty by default so we'll change it to just Arial which everybody will have and if not it can just fall back okay and lastly we'll do a class of short text uh, width of 310 pixels Actually, not lastly, one more thing. And the submit form button is the last thing I believe we need to take care of CSS wise. Uh, we want 10 pixels of margin on the top, and that'll do it. A width of 92 pixels and a height of 31. The background will be transparent, URL, style, images contact underscore send at jpeg no repeat and scroll color will be white or number FFF or hex code FFF excuse me font size of 13 pixels make sure the cursor is set to a pointer and a font style of normal 
Okay. That should do it. Uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, looks great. Um, let me take a look. Uh, okay, well, you'll notice they're adjusted to the left, but, you know, I think this looks just as good. If not, we could go back and adjust them to the left, but, uh, yeah, I think it looks great, at least a lot better than, uh, than it looked before. So now that we have, you know, our little, um, all our things working, our input fields and whatnot, and everything's styled, we can move on to actually making it function. So... Um, if you look back, you'll remember that we can close out our style here. You remember that our form is posting to sendmail.php. So if you actually go out of your theme folder and you go just to your root um, WordPress install, where you'll find you know wp-config and all of those files, we're just going to make a new file there so we can simply just post to it from that form. And, uh, of course, we're just going to call it sendmail.php. Oops, it looks like I already have it. Uh, I'll open it up and just get rid of it for you guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. So, of course, open up some PHP tags. And the first thing we're going to do is we don't want people just to be able to access this file um, without actually submitting the form. So we're going to make sure that the name is set. So if is set post name. You know, if it's not, we'll just echo out um, you know, form must be properly submitted. Of course, feel free to word this or do this however you want, but this is just, you know, a kind of a simple way to do it. Uh, before I go any farther, I want I wanted to mention um, this if I didn't already. We're doing it uh, this way because even if JavaScript is disabled, um, this will still be functional. We'll still be able to post the file. We'll still be able to send the email, and then we're just going to use JavaScript to override that functionality. You know, post to the form and grab the response. So that's why we're going to be um, echoing everything out straight from this file, is because we're going to have to echo it out um, and let JavaScript grab that response, because um, that's the way we're going to do it today. So, um, and it will be uh, secure and validate as well. Um, you'll see that we could produce slightly nicer uh, error messages, but but it's definitely going to do the job and be um, and be secure from you know some basic uh, spam kind of things. Um, you could always implement a capture, or whatever, whatever you want to do for that. But it will validate emails and make sure that um, inputs are always are all sanitized and, and things of that nature. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, let's go ahead and set up some variables. We're going to call w this first one input name. We're going to strip tags on all of these uh, incoming uh, post variables, and that would be post name. We'll do input email. strip tags on post email input subject equals strip the tags on the subject post subject and input message we'll also strip the tags and um, on post message of course, you could you know run a function that does all these tag stripping at once, but you know for the purpose of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come down here at the bottom uh, below all of our conditional statements, and we're going to set up a really small little handy dandy function, and we're going to call it validate email. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that we're probably going to do some kind of regular expression work here, and we're not. We're going to, you know, I, I see a lot of people using regular expressions in PHP to try to validate emails. And uh, unless you're running a, a, you know, a really slower version or a lower version of PHP, um, like four, and you know, not not one of the newer versions of PHP five, you can use uh, the filter var function, which we're going to look at. And, and not even worry about any of that regular expression stuff because it is extremely difficult to uh, allow for every single type of uh, 
email format and, and valid format and catch it all in one regular expression without you know either locking somebody out when you should or letting them in when you shouldn't so um, it's kind of one of my pet peeves is using regular expressions when there are already built-in functions that you can take advantage of now that said you are going to need PHP 5 um, uh, PHP 5 or higher I can't tell you if you'll need an exact version of PHP 5 or higher I'll link to that below but anyway you can just um, you know always Google PHP filter ver but all we're gonna do is return filter underscore VAR ver or var however you want to pronounce it email so the input email and then we're gonna have a constant filter validate email and now all this is going to do is return true or false um, depending on whether or not the email we pass to the function is valid or not and that is it I mean that is how easy PHP has made it now to validate an email so that said we're going to come back up here um, to underneath our input message variable and we're now going to say if validate email on the input email so if they gave a valid email, and then we're just going to do some quick empty checks here. Um, this is where you could take a little more time and try to nail each field, but you could really just do that in the front end with JavaScript, and and you're gonna, and we'll just do it this way. Um, we're just going to say if you know uh, if it's not empty on the input name, and uh, the input subject is not empty and not empty on the input message okay yeah okay so what this is going to do <coughs> excuse me it's going to make sure that the email pass is valid and it's also going to make sure that the name the subject and the message uh, none of those are left empty so if none of those are left empty and everything passes, we're going to go ahead and attempt to mail uh, the, the email. So we're going to say if mail, then the first parameter is, to, is uh, to who the mail is going to go to, so your email. So I'm just going to put down one of my personal uh, email addresses here. And the next is the input, sub, input subject, the input message and uh, any additional headers so we're going to use double quotes here um, to embed a variable and we'll say from input email from the email address that they gave so if the mail um, function is successful meaning if the mail uh, was successfully sent out then we'll just echo back um, you know your email has been sent thanks if it was not successful, we'll just say uh, problem sending email. Whoopsie. Okay, but if um, we come back over to our other statement here, if it doesn't validate, if the email doesn't validate, or if they left a bunch of fields out, we're just going to echo uh, please fill out all fields and ensure that your email is valid just something simple like that and uh, we'll just save that so if we come back to our contact form we refresh we put our name and you know our name is theme forest or the dude that's better you know our, our email is theme forest at yahoo.com now notice that might not be an existing email address but it is formatted properly and that's where our uh, our function is going to help us out um, this won't work if we were to put a comma and write you know some other email at email.com or whatever that won't work at all um, it has to be one properly formatted email address subject could just be uh, you know yo yo dude and the message could be um, you know whatever you want it to be theme forest is a great marketplace 
Okay, come over and click send email. You can see your email has been sent. Thanks. And from testing this, I know it's arrived. I'm not going to check my mail on on uh, the screencast, but it, but it, it has been sent and it worked. So it's working, but you know that was you know, everything w went nicely. But we could use some cool little Ajax effects here to make it even more friendly. So now what we're going to do is come back over to our contact page template that we've made. Uh, actually, we're going to go back to our admin panel because we're going to go to edit pages. I don't remember. I must have already set that as the template for the contact page. Okay. Well, yeah, you're going to want to make sure you come back to your contact page and set the default template to uh, contact page if you haven't done so already. Okay, anyway, so now I'll come back and I'll go to um, Coda. And above our get header call, we're now going to want to include the jQuery library. But we want to do this kind of the correct way because WordPress already comes with a lot of different JavaScript libraries. So we can just um, tell WordPress that we want to include them on this certain template. So we're going to say WP, and I will mess this up if I try to say it. So I'm just going to in quay in qui and quay script. <laughs> you guys can feel free to ridicule me later. And and it's uh, E N Q U E U E. I always spell that wrong too. Okay, and now we're going to pass it to the first parameter, a string. We're going to call it Ajax mail. See, the second parameter is going to be the uh, the path. So this is going to be uh, backslash wp content, or excuse me, just forward slash, not backslash. Themes, paper business, style, JavaScript, Ajax mail. Dot js, and the last parameter is going to be an array. And we're going to say jQuery, all lowercase. Okay, so what's going on here is we're telling uh, WordPress that, okay, we have a script called Ajax Mail that we're just about to create here. Um, it's going to be called AjaxMail.js, but we're going to leave the, you leave the .js off for the first parameter. Um, we're going to say it's located at this file path, and then we're also saying that this JavaScript file um, depends on uh, this library. So it depends on the jQuery library. It's an array because this could depend on the jQuery library and um, you know maybe you know, you know Scriptaculous or something. Um, so this is the right way to actually include scripts and template pages on WordPress. This is really uh, thoughtful WordPress function that they put into the core. So take advantage of it. Um, and remember the name is Ajax Mail. So we're going to come back over to our uh, theme, and we're going to go into style, dot, uh, our JavaScript directory, and we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it, whoops, no idea what I just did there. We're going to call it uh, Ajax Mail. Dot JS. And this is going to be all of our jQuery code for our uh, for sending our um, you know mail via Ajax. So we will start off with I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, at least worked with jQuery before. We'll say function. Okay, and then we're going to say uh, we're going to set up the. Uh, I'll try to comment this as best as I can. Set up the click event, and so we're going to say the class of submit form, which is our submit button, our little send email button. Say on click, perform this function. Okay, now we're going to set up some basic variables. Oops, variables uh, with needed values. Okay, so we'll say var input underscore name equals 
uh, input colon eq zero, which is, means the first input field, which is the name field, dot val. So we're taking the value of the first input field and storing it in a variable named uh, input name. Uh, actually, um, follow that with a comma, not a semicolon like I did, because we're going to declare multiple variables here. Uh, so comma input underscore email is going to do it's going to be equal to input eq1 dot val which will be the second um, input field as they're zero indexed um, I'm sorry and that in that second variable should actually be inputs yeah input email I'm a little confused reading my notes here okay the next one will be input subject is going to be input colon eq2 dot value comma and last is going to be input message which is going to be equal to uh, the text area value so dot val and then we'll end that finally with a semicolon um, and again I'm <laughs> reading my notes wrong do not end that with a semicolon, go back to a comma, and we're going to set up one more variable called ajax underscore loader, which is going to uh, store a little image tag for us. So we're going to say img source equals is equal to http, um, and I'm just going to hard code this for now because you'll remember I was having problems with uh, with my local install and using the constant of template path so um, bear with me while I hard code this but I'll say localhost colon 8888 slash paper business slash WP content slash themes paper business style images ajax-loader.gif and the alt text will be loading and we'll close it off and finally we will end it with a semicolon and I apologize for any of the confusion there I'm looking off some of my notes I have printed out here and it's very early in the morning so I need more coffee now anyway moving on <coughs> we are going to go ahead and hide any previous response text meaning um, if they've clicked something twice or tried to send two emails and there's already a response um, put out and a div that we're going to have named of response uh, we're going to go ahead and hide it so that's uh, response ID dot hide okay next we want to finally show the loader so we've set up some variables, they've clicked on the send button, we want to show our little Ajax loader, uh, which we actually need to add to our images folder before I forget. Okay. So now we'll show the loader, and we'll just say uh, id loader dot html, and that will be our variable Ajax loader. Okay, once that's shown, we're going to use the jQuery's post function. We're going to say post. We're going to post this to sendmail.php, which is our mail file, uh, comma, and then we're going to use the open and closing bracket, curly brackets here, and we're going to send some objects, and we're going to say uh, name is going to be input name comma email colon is input uh, email subject colon input subject comma message is input message and that's it Okay, so put a comma after the right closing bracket, and we're going to say function, and inside that function we will say data, which 
which is our callback function that will hold the response. And whoop, okay. And inside of that, we will do something um, with our response. So this is what actually posts all of our variables and values to the send mail file. And here's our callback function, which is a function that will be executed once um, it has been posted and we received our response, which is stored in a value or variable, excuse me, named data. So now we can go ahead and hide the loader now that we have a response. So we can just say, you know, hide any image in the loader uh, div. We're going to hide it over one second, which is 1,000 milliseconds approximately. And we're going to use another callback function. So function, and this pretty much means, so after the loader's been hidden, now we want to do something. So we'll say field set, which is one of our tags that we have. We're going to append, which means we're going to add on to the, uh, to the bottom of it. And we're going to append a div ID of response and inside of that will be our data and we'll close back off our div okay and lastly we don't want to forget to go ahead and return false on upon click or else the form will still be submitted okay so I think there was one more thing we needed to do style-wise to get this uh, working how we need it to before we do it. Yeah, we need to go ahead and style the loader and the response uh, divs that will show up on click. So ID of loader, if you go to your style.css file, will be a margin of 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 0 on the left and right. And the response text which is going to just be the little div that holds the response message. Um, we're going to have a little fun here with some CSS3. Border will be one pixel solid. Uh, hex is 55A5D3. Five 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 Border radius is going to be five pixels. Moz border radius, five pixels. WebKit border radius is going to be 5 pixels. That should hit most of the supporting browsers. Uh, text align is center. And again, if they don't have rounded corners on this, it's just a tiny little response box. So it, it, it won't make much of a difference. You'll see what I'm talking about shortly. Padding will be 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 5 pixels on the left and right. And lastly, we want a margin of 10 pixels on the top and bottom and none on the left or right. Okay, we'll save that. Um, I'm hoping I didn't forget anything. We'll go ahead and test it out and see what I did wrong. Or, or what I maybe have done right. Okay, again, we'll say the dude. Uh, email is email at, you know, my email dot com just to properly forward formatted email the test or the subject will be um, you know does it work and I hope it does okay so we'll click send email you can see your email has been sent thanks so um, you'll notice that the Ajax uh, you know little animated Ajax uh, GIF barely showed up um, that's because we're running on localhost and it's just so fast. It gets the response from the Ajax request so fast. Um, so if you run this on a live server, you'll notice that it'll show up for a lot longer and it, you know, look really nice like it's supposed to. Um, but it's just, you know, I'll go ahead and send another email here. Uh, but it just, you know, <laughs> it shows up and, and leaves so fast just because it gets the response back so quickly. Um, but it, yeah, it works and it has been sent. And I know for a fact it's there because I've done this, you know, 50 million times to make sure it it worked um, but let's go ahead and actually we'll put in everything um, you know blah but for the email we'll misformat it we'll put theme forest at yahoo or theme for yeah theme forest 
at yahoo.com and um, you know we'll try to put in two emails here support at you know blah blah dot com like we're trying to you know uh, carbon copy it here to another email I'll go ahead and click send email and you'll see p uh, please fill out in all fields and ensure that your email address is valid um, so you know it, it is working it is validating it if we don't fill out any of it yeah, of course it'll catch it and make sure that um, that all the fields are indeed feel, um, filled out. So I think I'm beginning to ramble here. Um, we can touch on next time if you guys want to add in some more, uh, you know, client side validation. So, like you know, some live field validation um, and some nicer error messages if you want but um, yeah give it a try see if you get the email uh, you shouldn't have any problems and uh, and that is how you integrate an Ajax contact form in um, in WordPress so I am off to go uh, to go get some coffee and wake up here a little bit more so I hope you guys have a great uh, morning or afternoon or evening wherever it is you are uh, happy WordPress coding and I will see you guys for day 19 shortly